Okay, this is a true story. One of my students, who's a great student who learned how to use Camera Raw, went to a party and shot all of his images in Camera Raw. And then everyone at the party got excited, wanted to see the images, went to put it on the computer. And since they didn't have the Camera Raw plugins or Photoshop, they were unable to view the images and everyone was disappointed. He had to go convert them one by one on his own computer and it literally took him about two hours. So the thing is, Christian, I feel so bad because um, in some ways you needed this information and when you guys hear how this works, you will be jumping for joy because this is one of the most fantastic things about working in Camera Raw and to understand how to use a lot of the automated or batch automated things in Camera Raw is to understand that Camera Raw is not difficult. And one of the ways that people get frustrated in Photoshop and Camera Raw is that they, you know, do things one at a time and it becomes frustrating and overwhelming with so many images. And so when I give you these tools, you will be loving it. So here we go. This is, I'm going to show you a few types of batch processing through the Camera Raw palette. So right now we're in Bridge. We've got 36 images and you can see by the um, ex file extension, CR2, that we have raw images. Um, so on and like a friend's computer who doesn't have Photoshop with the proper plugin, these are completely unreadable. So what you can do is open all your images. And now there's two steps here that for the most part, people forget that there's two steps to batch processing in Camera Raw. It's a double select all. So here's how it goes. First, I need to select all of these. If I select one, it makes no sense to do a batch process on one. It's kind of like batch rename, which you guys are very familiar with now. So we need to take the shortcut. It makes sense um, to select all these, which is Command A. Apple A or Control A on the PC. So I'm going to do that, Command A. I've selected all. Now I'm going to take the shortcut to opening this in the Camera Raw palette. And I'm going to hit Command R on the Mac. And what this does is it brings all of those images into Camera Raw. There were 36 images and I now have 36 images in Camera Raw. And now what I'm going to do is um, take a look at all of them at the same time. So here's what I mean about uh, select all twice. If you look over here on the left, all my images are lined up and I only have one selected at the very top. So now what I need to do is select all again. If you can remember that, that it's a select all and then a select all again, um, you'll never have a problem with this. So it's a double select all. Now I have all images selected and I can do a multiple of things to this. Um, it's amazing. Like when I looked at all those images in Bridge, I thought they were all a little bit dark. So what I'm going to do now that I have, I've done the double select all, I can actually change the exposure of all of these at the same time. So I can do a kind of initial exposure change and then go through and do one by one. So watch this. This is so cool. That little exclamation point that you're seeing on the images, little thumbnails on the left, that means it's thinking. So see how that just, it blew through 36 images and lightened them. And now I'm going to do a batch. I'm going to change the black a little bit darker. And so it blew through those and I could be done if those were all shot in the same place and the look of them were the same. I just did all my changes all at once, all at the same time. Now, here's the next thing I let's say I want to do a crop. Um, I was asked to make these all small squares or lots of times you'll shoot like a wedding and they'll say, can we have um, three by five pictures? you can go into the crop tool here in camera raw 
and let's say I do a one-to-one. -one. In other words, I want a square. So no matter how I draw, drag the crop tool, I can go one-to-one. -one. I can also set up custom and put in exact inches of my crop. This is a beautiful thing. So let's say I just want squares. I'm going to go one-to-one -one here, and it'll force me to drag a square on the picture. And so it is actually now going through all those pictures and making a square crop on them. And then what I can do, and this is great when people want a five by seven or something like that. You make your initial crop and then you go through picture by picture and you just click and adjust. Go to the next one, click and adjust where you want it to be. Now, of course, I'm probably not going to crop these pictures this way, but I can decide where I want that. The crop's already in place. Isn't that kind of amazing? You know, let's say I want that. So they'll all be exactly the same format. And, you know, let's say you did a studio shot where someone was in the middle of the picture, but you pulled out too much and you didn't, you wanted to crop in around the edges. Then you just do the crop straight through like that. And it takes a matter of seconds. So anything that you could do in Camera Raw, when you have everything selected, it allows you to do it to however many images. You could have a thousand images. It might take a while and churn for a while, but for the most part, uh, it will go through all a thousand images in a matter of minutes. So the last and most beautiful thing is that you can convert your Camera Raw images to whatever you like, TIFF, JPEG, DNG, um, all at the same time. So I have to do select all. Remember, I clicked off, so I just have a single image highlighted here. So I need to go back to select all. Got all. And see down here it says 36 selected out of 36 images. I'm all selected. And I'm going to go to that tab that says save images. It's a little out of frame here, but you know it well. Um, I do the save images. And I'm going to go, let's save in a new location. And let's select a folder. And I'm going to go onto the desktop. I'm going to make a new folder and call it um, TIFFs. I'm going to change these all to TIFFs. Let's say I want to print them all. So I'll go TIFF. Oops, sorry. And you can make JPEGs too. Like let's say you were at that party and you wanted JPEGs you would do um, JPEGs here. So I'm going to make a folder called TIFF and I'm going to select that folder. That's real important. You got to select it. You could already have that folder on the desktop, but I made a new one by just hitting new folder. So I hit select and then I'm going to go down here and choose TIFF. No compression. Remember we use TIFF as a lossless compression. So in other words, it's a file format with no compression, really the same as being in PSD, except we always use TIFFs for printing. So then I'm going to hit save. And you can see way down here at the bottom, see how it's counting down? Sorry, it's a little close to the frame here, but it's counting down. It's saying 33 remaining. Remember, it's going through 36 images, 32, 31. 30. So it's not lightning fast, but you don't even open these images. It's going right to that TIFF folder. Um, you could go away, have a cup of coffee. If you had a thousand images, you could hit this thing and actually go work in Photoshop and do something else. I mean, that's the interesting thing. But I'm just watching these tick away. Um, I could read my email. And so you don't have to do any work. You can just do all your exposures together, make your crops together. And, and what really counts is that there's a similarity between the images and that similarity will allow you to do these exposure shifts. If you don't have that similarity, of course, you have to do these one by one. You know, it's, it's an individual thing, but you could go in and choose a white balance, like a tungsten white balance or something like that. But this batch processing is has saved me hours of time and it's the one thing that makes using camera raw not frustrating and a lot of people will say oh you should shoot raw images plus jpegs 
The only reason to do that is if you had no way to convert your um, raw images at all and you needed to be able to view J JPEGs because in the time that I just talked, I'll bring over our TIFF folder that I put on the desktop here and uh, let me open it. There it is. And here are all the images, all 36 images. And as you can see, with little effort at all, it's just chattering away. I have changed all these images to TIFFs. So that's what I do every time. And it's so useful once you learn that you can do s s everything in Camera Raw as a batch or an automated batch. And all this stuff is just pre um, scripted actions that are already written for you. It's going to change your life. <laughs>